Okay, thank you. Great. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the overview session for K for Me and First Grade for Me. Um, I'm Leanne Larson. I'm the director of the early learning team in the Department of Education, and it's my pleasure to be able to be with you this afternoon. I am joined by a couple of my colleagues, and I'm going to let them each introduce themselves. Nicole. Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us. I'm Nicole Madour. I'm the early childhood specialist on the early learning team at DOE. Great. And good afternoon. I'm Dee Sosier. I am the literacy specialist on the special projects team and the office, office of special services and inclusive education. Thank you both so much. So it's great to have you all with us this afternoon. Um, we have been looking forward to sharing this overview about the two instructional programs that you'll hear about today. These have been um, uh, programs that we have been working on now for a number of years. And um, there are quite a few teachers now across our state that are utilizing them. So we're excited that you are interested in learning more about them and potentially um, adopting them yourselves. So I wanna start by just giving um, a little bit of an overview for our time together this afternoon. We're gonna begin with a short history of our work um, around these programs to date. And then we're gonna take some time to um, walk through the two programs so that you have a better understanding about their design. And then I um, invited a few educators from Maine who have been using the programs to be able to share some of their perspectives with you because it's always helpful to hear from the folks who are um, actually doing the implementation in their classrooms or schools. And then we'll um, describe some of the professional learning support that's available for the programs and offer opportunity for questions. And that should readily fill up our time uh, together this afternoon. So let me kick things off by building a little bit of background for you. Um, the first thing that we always like to share about this work is that we really need to give credit to um, the educators who work in the Boston public school system because if it weren't for the work that they've been doing um, over a number of years now, um, honestly, close to 20 years now, um, we wouldn't have access to K for me and first grade for me the way that we do. Um, back in 2005, the Boston public school system launched public pre-K for the first time. And in doing so, they, um, utilized some resources, um, one of which was a program called Opening the World of Learning or OWL, which is a pre-K program. They also use building blocks for the math piece of it. Um, but in their work as they got going, they discovered a few things that they wanted to make certain they paid close attention to. Um, and one of those was that many of the practices that they were utilizing in pre-K, they wanted to make sure would continue to advance with their students into kindergarten first and eventually on into second grade. One of the other things that happened is that um, opening the world of learning ended up going to a, a second edition and Boston didn't really like the second edition as well and so they negotiated to be able to continue using um, the original version, but also to be able to have the rights to it so that they could adapt it and begin to build out into their early elementary grades. And that's what led to um, the Boston Public Schools developing what they now call their focus curriculum. Um, in Boston, their pre-K classrooms are referred to as K-1 and their kindergarten classrooms are referred to as K-2. So if you go to the Boston Public Schools website and you look up the focus curriculum, you'll see focus on K-1, focus on K-2, focus on first and focus on second. And that is the entire span pre-K to second grade. Um, if you are 
interested in knowing more about the work um, historically that has led to the development of these instructional programs, a really great text to dive into is one called Children at the Center. This really captures the entire history of the evolution of Boston's work. And then more recently, um, they have been part of a longitudinal study that's been conducted by the Institute for Educational Sciences. And you can read more about that at the link at the bottom of this slide. Um, following today's session, I will send out the slides and the links that are embedded so that you'll be able to access them. Um, but those are great resources if you're curious about the impact that the program has had over time. Um, one other thing that I always like to point out is that um, Boston is, you know, represents a very diverse population. They have 107 um, elementary schools across the city. They serve over 55,000 students. A large percentage of those students are multilingual learners. Um, there's a lot of diversity racially across their community. 66% of their um, students come from economically disadvantaged um, backgrounds, and about 20% of the population um, has been identified um, through special education. So there's a lot of diversity that exists, and I like to point that out because one of the things that we really appreciate about K for Me and First Grade for Me is how responsive the program materials are um, both in terms of being culturally responsive, but also very um, adaptable for differentiation with children in the classroom. So they meet a, a large variety of children's needs. So over a period of time, um, our early learning team in the Department of Education had been following the work in Boston and had had a chance actually to even go and visit some of the classrooms in Boston and see the programming in action. And simultaneously to us getting interested in what Boston was doing, um, we had the luxury of having a few grants over a period of time that enabled us to start dabbling a little bit in the programming. The first of which um, was a school expansion grant that had some supplemental money in, uh, available to us. And that enabled us to take Boston's pre-K program and adapt it for Maine. So back in 2018 and 19, we engaged in that work. We actually took what Boston had developed. We enhanced it some. We added a math component. Um, we added some outdoor learning, a digital learning piece, um, some supplemental text. We piloted it in a number of pre-K classrooms. And then after doing that work, we posted it for, um, as an open education resource and have um, engaged in training around that program ever since. Um, interestingly, we also had the opportunity to have that program reviewed by West Ed because um, a number of the Head Start programs in our state were interested in using it. And in order for them to be able to use the program, they have to be using something that has been reviewed and approved. And West Ed has been the um, entity that's provided those reviews for them. And so Pre-K for Me actually now is on the approved list for Head Start programs across the country. Um, one of the things that led us to engage in that work for around pre-K for me was because we had a number of school systems over time reach out and say, you know, we, we really want to find a well-developed um, pre-K curriculum program that we can use that meets our learning standards, but is not um, one going to break the bank and isn't gonna be something that we have to cobble together lots of different programs in order to make it work well. And so for us, Pre-K for Me was a great opportunity to take the work from Boston and really shape it and make it work for us in Maine. Um, we also really appreciate it because it does address all domains of children's development. And as we hope you are very aware, Thinking about the whole child is very important to us. 
um, as we think about programming in the early years, children's development. So after the success we had with Pre-K for Me, we were fortunate to be able um, to also find a little bit more grant funding that let us dive into kindergarten. And we had already started to have some of the schools using Pre-K for Me say, what about kindergarten? Are you gonna work on, on moving it up? And so we got started with that and we established a pilot in 14 classrooms um, in school year 1920. And I bet most of you remember what occurred in school year 1920 um, when we had the pandemic begin. So we had to kind of uh, slow down our pilot just a little bit in that year. But interestingly, when we approached the schools that had started implementation in 1920, about continuing in 2021, not only did the 14 classrooms want to continue, but we had another 14 classrooms that asked if they could join the pilot. So we ended up with 28 kindergarten classrooms in the pilot. And through that process, we also did some enhancement work um, related to math, uh, excuse me, related to writing in the program. We added a math supplement um, piece we did some work around some of the STEM lessons and we also added some supplemental text and we engaged in an evaluation of the pilot, which I'll talk about a little later this afternoon. So after all of that work was complete, we were able to post um, Kindergarten for Me as an open education resource. And like Pre-K for Me, we've continued to provide training um, for educators in the summer. And we've also established a series of PLCs that we run during the school year to help support the implementation of the program. So this current school year, we had had a number of our schools reach out and say, hey, so we've got pre-K and we've got K, what about first grade? So we launched this past school or this current school year into a pilot with another 14 classrooms that are testing out um, first grade for me. Um, and um, we have been working to build out the STEM um, science component of the program. And we're also engaging in an evaluation piece. Um, so we'll be collecting that information. And then the plan is um, that first grade for me will be posted as an open um, education resource during um, the early part of the summer so that it will be available for schools to start using next school year. And then um, I'll talk more about some of the professional learning we have planned as well as some exciting opportunities for some um, enhancement to some additional enhancement to K for me, first grade for me, and then eventually we're going to move into second grade. So. Um, with that background, um, a little bit more about why K for me and first grade for me. Um, as I mentioned, um, it's very important to us to really think about the whole child. And um, one of the ways that we think about addressing the whole child is by considering how can we immerse children in experiences that are interdisciplinary, but also aligned to our learning standards. And that is something that both of these programs do really, really well. In addition to that, they also present a very um, focused sequence of skills and concepts that not only provide opportunity for explicit and intentional instruction that's really grounded in the science of learning, um, but also provides children with opportunity for student voice, agency around their learning, play, full experiences, project-based learning experiences. Um, so very developmentally appropriate, um, but also very well aligned to our set of learning standards in our state. So as we have been using these two programs, um, we notice that kids get to experience a lot of wonderful learning opportunities. Um, the programs, as you'll notice, include a lot of diverse um, texts that are both fictional and non-fictional. 
Um, they include lots of opportunities for kids to direct their learning, including time every day for um, playful experiences. Kids get to interact with one another. There's lots of interaction with teachers. But at the same time, there's lots of foundational skill building and drawing and sharing on um, experiences that children are having. So um, it's been really wonderful to watch the kinds of learning that's happening in classrooms that are using these two programs. So I wanted to be able to give you a little bit of a, an overview so that you could see um, how the different units unfold. Um, and so this particular slide shows you the progression between pre-K and second grade. Um, you'll notice in pre-K that that program is broken up across six units, but beginning in kindergarten um, and moving on through second grade, the program is broken up into four units for each year. So the units become a little bit longer so that they can students can go into a bit more depth. Um, and the length of the units is generally about eight weeks a piece, although in kindergarten, the first unit is a little bit shorter and then a, the others are a little bit longer than that. But starting in first grade, they're each built around eight weeks in length. And you can also notice, I hope, that there's um, really good integration of science and social studies um, across the different units throughout the year. And if you look across each year, you'll see how some of the themes continue from year to year. So for instance, the focus around moving from the notion of a family as a community out to larger notion of community um, builds across those first four years of instruction, which is really helpful to students learning as well. So what I'm gonna do for the next few minutes is just kind of walk you through both K for me and um, first grade for me. And you're gonna see a lot of overlap in the design of these programs. Um, and then we'll hear from some of our friends who have been using the programs who can elaborate a little bit more. Um, so this slide shows you a nice overview of the different components that make up the K for me instructional program. You'll see that text is right in the center because everything in the programs connect in some way to the texts that are selected. Whether it's the actual read aloud portion where you're working a lot on vocabulary and um, rich comprehension um, of text to the center time where kids are bringing things that you're reading about in text into centers to the foundational literacy block where you're drawing upon um, shared reading that is connected with the um, theme that are coming through the text to the writing point, portion of the day, which is also writing that's often um, in a genre that is connected to the particular theme that you're working on. A couple things I also want to make sure that I point out that are important about both K for me and first grade for me is that um, they, these programs do require that a school have a systematic and explicit phonics program that can be coupled with the program. And part of what we work on in training is how to help schools marry your phonics program with the rest of K for me. And then currently the math piece, schools will need to have a standalone math program. I will share that um, we were recently awarded a grant that is going to enable us to build out math, the math component for kindergarten, first and second grade, um, but that will not be ready for a couple of years. So for right now, um, if a school has their own math program, they would want to just continue to use that program. This slide gives you a little bit of an idea of each of the components that we find in the approximate amount of time devoted to that particular component. One thing that you'll very quickly notice is that there's a strong value placed on the center time for students during the day. In kindergarten, um, about 80 minutes a day is allocated to that portion of time. 
Um, about 60 of those minutes are time that kids are actually engaged in centers. There's about 10 minutes of time where teachers are introducing and setting up, getting kids into the centers, and then some thinking and feedback. That's a routine that's used at the end of center time. Um, this reduces a little bit in first grade. You'll notice that when we get to that slide, um, but it's still a, a key component. And this is an opportunity for a lot of self-directed, purposeful play in interdisciplinary ways. Um, and I'll show you a slide that depicts centers in just a second. Read aloud is another really pivotal time of the day. That's when those texts come to bear and it's, it happens daily. Children are engaged in some really rich texts and they keep going back into those texts repeatedly over the course of um, a unit. Storytelling story acting is an opportunity for teachers to capture children's stories and then act them out. It doesn't take a ton of time, but it's really powerful. Another big piece is the block of time for reading and foundational literacy building. This is where your systematic and explicit phonics phonemic awareness piece comes in. There's a shared reading strand and children will be engaging in literacy stations and small group instruction during that window of time. And then there's also a dedicated block of time for writing instruction. And then, as I mentioned, the math component. So in K for me, um, the curriculum is broken up into four units. The program starts with community and children are engaged in really thinking about their classroom community and other communities around them. In the second unit, the focus shifts to animals and habitats and they dive deeply into um, how animals adapt to those habitats um, and all of the different ways that habitats um, help animals um, in their survival. Um, they explore several different um, animals in a great depth and then kids have a chance to um, do some more learning on their own around animals they might be interested in. The third unit is one of the, the units that I all, often hear from teachers is the biggest hit for kids and it's all about construction. Um, and it's a pretty cool, very hands-on unit um, that kids get deeply engaged in. And then they end the year with a unit called Our Earth where they're really looking at some of the aspects of how we take care of our earth, how ecosystems work together. All of the units um, operate around something called an arc, which begin with some guiding questions that really um, help to drive what the unit um, focuses on. So the slide you're looking at is the arc for our community, the first unit in the kindergarten program. And then within that, those key questions or guiding questions that kids keep coming back to again and again, um, they are also exploring some big ideas. And so that's what you see on the left hand side, excuse me, the right hand side of your screen. And you can see that those are some pretty big ideas that they are engaging in. Um, it's really quite amazing the amount of conversation that children will have um, and how deeply they will um, engage in some of these ideas as they go through the various units. This slide gives you a little preview of some of the books that are part of this unit in um, kindergarten in the first unit. And I bet you'll recognize some of the characters like Chrysanthemum and Abby Yo-Yo, um, the name jar, just to name a few. And then this slide gives you a little depiction of some of the um, centers that are part of K for Me. So that you'll notice that there's a wide variety, everything from an art studio to blocks, which are a huge hit, drawing and writing, the library and listening center, the STEM area, and then the dramatization area. And then to round out K for Me, um, and I'm going to go through this fairly quickly, but these next two slides just kind of depict how you might break out um, the components across the school day. 
just to give you a little bit of an idea. In this particular example, you start with a, kind of like a morning meeting. You might incorporate the storytelling, story acting at that point. Then it shifts to read aloud, on to center time, then to math. And then after lunch, um, the um, focused time around reading and phonics. And then um, more opportunity for storytelling, story acting, and the writing time toward the end of the day. And obviously, this is something that teachers decide, you know, how they will map out over the course of their day against, you know, the amount of time you have when your specials are, when your lunch break is. Shifting now to first grade for me, you're going to notice that this is very similar in a lot of ways to what you saw for K for me. Again, there is the need for a separate phonics program. She'll be right back. The way in which there she is. You lot, you might you want to go back Sorry. to. There's going to be a need for a separate phonics. Go. Thank you, Dee. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it was going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> Apologies, everyone. Okay, so just like in K for me, there is a need for a separate math program and marrying your phonics program into the um, first grade for me program. But just like K for me, the texts are really the pivotal center of everything. Um, all of the components are really built and connected to the, the text. There are a couple of shifts in the way that some of the pieces are referred to. So in kindergarten, um, we refer to read aloud, but in first grade, it shifts to what's called text talk. And text talk is also used in second grade. Um, while we refer in kindergarten to centers, in first and second grade, they become studios. And um, in first and second grade, instead of having that center time five days a week, in first and second grade studios happen three days a week. And then science and engineering replaces the studio block on a couple days a week. So there's a little more deliberate attention to science and STEM instruction in both first and second grade happening in its own separate block. Still lots of science happening in kindergarten. Um, it just unfolds a little bit differently than it does in first and second grade. This will give you an idea of the breakdown of timing across first grade. So you'll see that um, there's a little bit more time um, built in about 70 minutes for the literacy phonics block if you combine the station time and the phonics program and during stations small group instruction would will also be happening. Um, but you can also see the breakdown of the studios against the science block, but still a really you know nice chunk of time for the, the read aloud text talk portion strong focus on vocabulary development. Um, and also that block for, for writing, as well as the time for math. In first grade, again, there's four units. The first one starts with that community theme, but it's getting a little broader and students are starting to think out now more beyond their classroom environment. Um, they move into um, the second unit, which deals with animals surviving and thriving. So a little bit different focus, but it's going to build on what they um, worked on in kindergarten. In unit three, they move into what's called resources in our community. And this really gets at looking more deeply at um, some aspects of like basic economy needs and wants, um, how people meet those basic needs. Um, and again, picks up on some of those threads around community that have been begun back in kindergarten and are moving across the first grade year. And then um, first grade finishes with a really exciting unit called communicating with light, sound and light. And then just like in kindergarten, all of the units in first grade are built around essential questions and big ideas. 
So this gives you an idea of what that looks like in first grade in the first unit. And then a plethora of text, just like in um, the kindergarten program. And this is these are all texts just from unit one, some of which I'm sure you will recognize. Studios get a little bit more advanced in um, first grade. So you'll see um, some of what teachers might be introducing and asking students to do to get a little bit more complex, but still a lot of room for self-direction. And then finally, one piece that I didn't talk about back in kindergarten, but I'm going to mention here, um, this happens to be an example of a um, project experience that happens in the first unit of the first grade program called the Book Access Project where kids are working um, to try to answer that question about how they could increase book access in their towns or neighborhoods. Um, most of the units all have an associated project that the unit builds up to. Um, in kindergarten, there isn't really a project in the first unit and that's by design because kids are really just getting comfortable with school, but starting in the second unit, that project piece comes in and then you see that consistently in each one of the units moving forward. Okay, I am going to stop talking now so that we can hear a little bit from um, some kindergarten folks who've been involved in the kindergarten program and some folks from the first grade. So I'm gonna stop sharing my screen for just a second um, so that you can see folks on the screen, but I wanna invite Carly Ellis, who's a kindergarten teacher in Otisfield, and Tiffany Carnes, who's a principal at Oxford Elementary School, to jump in first, maybe share a little bit with us about some of your um, perspectives on K for Me, um, what you've seen to be beneficial, or any tips that you might want to offer to people who are thinking that they might want to dive in to K for Me. I don't know who wants to go first, but <laughs> I'll jump in Carly and then you can, cause I'm sure you have more uh, information that they'll wanna know. Um, so we jumped on in the pilot year uh, 1920 um, because what we were doing was not working in kindergarten. Teachers were miserable, kids were miserable, our data was miserable. Um, so we knew we needed to do something different. Um, and if you would have told me then that I would walk in a kindergarten classroom on showcase day during animals and habitats, and they would be teaching me about estuaries, they would have made a wolf's den um, and could tell you anything you wanted to know about salmon or frogs, I would not have believed you. Um, our kiddos were coming in with really low oral language vocabulary experiences of any kind. We live in a very rural um area with lots of poverty uh, and just to see the increase in their oral language and the vocabulary that they know um, is uh, astounding. Um, I just looked at our data today uh, and we have all but four kids who have um, who know all their letters and letter sounds. Uh, we have 15% of our kids have already met the end of year have exceeded the end of year reading benchmark. Um, and 45 kids are, or 45% of our kids are at or above the current benchmark for reading. So it has made a huge difference. Um, the teachers are happy. We have way fewer behaviors in kindergarten. Parents are astounded by what their kids are going home and teaching them, uh, which is which is exciting. Um, and our reading recovery data for first graders is, um, is so much better. And the area that always um, surprises me on the OS every year is the hearing and recording sounds. Uh, the the numbers in those in those areas are uh, fantastic. So I can't I can't uh, say enough about this program and what it's done for our 
um, our building. Um, and I think sometimes people think about centers and kids are just playing and it's fluffy. It's really purposeful play when you go in and they're acting out the stories that they've read that week um, in dramatic play or they're uh, drawing pictures about it in the art studio uh, or they're building bridges and roads and all sorts of things with the blocks during the construction unit. Um, it's super engaging for kids. Um, and teachers are happy and kids are happy. So that makes the principal happy. <laughs> Carly, you can go. Um, hi, everyone. I am Carly Ellis. I'm one of the kindergarten teachers that also piloted um, that same year um, that Tiffany mentioned. I think that I actually had come from teaching pre-K and they were looking at um, the OWL program, which is very much like the um, pre-K for me program. And I was excited when I moved to kindergarten to pilot this because it is such a um, intentional play and project-based learning curriculum. Um, and overall, over the last few years, my students have I think they've grown to love learning and um, the K for me per curriculum presents learning in just a very um, adaptable, fun, creative way that I think we weren't seeing our students um, experiencing with some of the other curriculums that we were using. Um, kids, with the K for Me curriculum, kids are, like I said, they're excited to learn. Um, writing and reading are just another kind of uh, piece of that, that it's not seen as, oh, I got to sit down. I got to write, you know, three page. Like, it's very intentional. Um, one thing that I really enjoy about K for Me is the way that the learning is spread out over content areas. Um, like Leanne mentioned, it is really based upon the books and the rich literature that you're reading within the texts. Um, those texts also offer a wide uh, variety of rich vocabulary words that students, like estuaries that students are learning and um, being able to not just learn and kind of absorb while in the classroom, but that information is being absorbed and they're taking it home and talking to their families about it. And it's just such a, um, I think a different kind of, like I said, richer way of learning for our kids. Uh, like Tiffany mentioned, kids absolutely love it. The teacher, I love teaching it. I know a lot of other um, educators within our district are really enjoying this program as well. Um, it's very adaptable to, uh, you know, allowing parents to become involved and creating home activities that kind of make that bridge for the children. Um, I think the interdisciplinary approach that K for Me has too has really just, um, you know, our scores as well for reading and writing have increased. And like I mentioned, the kids just don't see it as work. They're they're having fun. Um, and they just, I think it's really setting them up for success as learners as they go. Um, I actually have enjoyed hearing more about the, the first grade program and I'm looking forward to that because I think that that's a great opportunity as well. Um, we are currently using the phonics program Jolly Phonics, and I can't say enough positive things about that, as I think that a lot of our students have really benefited from that. Um, and that also has that interdisciplinary approach as well with, you know, songs supporting letter sounds and, you know, teaching the kids on working on how to blend and segment and things like that. But I think overall, I really don't have any complaints or things that I have found, you know, a major challenge for K for me. I think it's a wonderful program that I would love to see other districts adopt and give it a try because I think it's definitely been successful for us. Well, thanks, Carly and Tiffany. We really appreciate um, you sharing a little bit about your perspectives. 
I'm going to shift it now to Emily and Rachel, who have both been piloting um, the program, um, the first grade program this year. And I don't know if you have a preference who would like to go first. Emily, do you want to kick us off? I can start. Um, I'll try to be quick because I could probably go on for hours about how much I'm enjoying the program. I've seen such a huge sh shift in my students. Very similarly, all the teachers were like, you know, these kids, they don't know how to play with each other. They have all these delays um, that we haven't seen before. Like, what do we do? And so then our kindergarten is using the K for me. And so they were like, well, now that there's a first for me, we might as well take that along as well. So I teach in a school where there's six first grades, but only three of us are using it and three of us aren't. And there is such a difference in the three that are and the three that aren't in our students in the way that even just socially and emotionally they behave. Um, they can have, you know, the whole afternoon where they're playing and I don't have to intervene once, like they're able to play with each other, they know how to self monitor, they recognize all these other social skills that weren't even part of any of the lessons I explicitly taught like I would have before using focus on first, and they're able to do all these things that they really were unable to. So it's been a huge shift. Their vocabulary and language is like, sometimes I'll listen and be like, are you sure you're really six years old? Like uh, they are able to talk about sea turtles and mountain goats and they use it not only like in that one subject, but throughout our entire day, even on the playground at recess, they'll be playing mountain goats and talk about how the snow's melting. So their habitat's going to have to change and like what resources they need. Um, so they're really taking all of our learning in and using it in their life. I will also say my families are so much more connected this year because they'll go home and they're excited to share what they're learning. And they'll, you know, I've had parents come in and be like, they told me this is happening. Like, can we come in for it? So like sometimes parents have came in just to do one of the read alouds or the text talks, or they'll come in at the end of the year project or the end of the unit projects to help out. Um, so like I said, I could go on and on and on about how amazing I really feel it is, but my students, the data also shows that like it is amazing for them and what they're taking away is phenomenal. They do science, which we didn't do before, um, at least twice a week, if not all week long in the studios. It's really an awesome program and I know for my school anyway, the three teachers that aren't using it often stop by and are like, can we steal that lesson because we walked by and we saw her and it looked really cool. Um, so I would definitely recommend it. Thanks, Emily. I'm gonna pass it off to Rachel. Hi, um, yes, I'm also in first grade. I echo everything I've heard. Um, I think, the only thing I would really have to add um, is this idea that the whole unit, the whole day then is like interconnected. So you're not learning about one thing in read aloud and one thing in science and one thing in phonics. Like it all weaves together to create a much more cohesive experience for the children so they can dig so much deeper and learn so much more. And I, I think that's incredibly powerful. Um, it's also really rich. And I, I've, I've always taught, you know, this is your writing curriculum. This is your reading curriculum. This is your math curriculum. And, you know, you know, what's best practice, you know, you want to be child centered and, um, play-based and developmentally, you know, you know, you know, right. You know, you need to make time for the conflict resolution, but it becomes really difficult when you have five different programs across your day. And the beauty of this is not only, is it all, they're all working together, but they build in that creativity, um, that play, that fun. And, and even, I mean, everything, even the content itself. So we're working, our unit is on resources and markets and like, who knew first graders are so excited to build a little store. Like I had no idea. I've never built a store with the first graders. They are so excited. 
And it's always like that. They're just, um, the design is so thoughtful. And so um, it fits so beautifully. And, you know, it's like, it's humbling because I, it's what I want my students to have. You know, I want my students to have that experience. And I couldn't have designed four beautiful units that stretch across the whole day like this. So it really, it's, it's a gift. And I, um, it's been, a, it's been really inspiring to work with it. And I'm, I would recommend, I'm curious to see, you know, the first year with anything is challenging. So I'm very curious to see how, how it continues to grow and develop, especially as kindergartners come up with it and all that. So thank you. Thank you, Rachel, and, and all four of you for a little bit of your time this afternoon to share. And I hope that that's helpful. And we'll um, get to an opportunity for questions in just a second. So, um, you know, you certainly welcome to ask the educators um, that you just heard from other questions as well. Um, I'm going to shift us back and just um, finish out a few other pieces that I want to make sure we cover this afternoon for folks. Um, so I mentioned to you earlier that as part of the pilot, we did engage in an evaluation um, in the pilot of K4Me. We're also doing one in the first grade for me program this year. But um, a few things I wanted to point out that were very strong findings in the evaluation. Um, the, in terms of the instructional program strengths, there were several that really rose to the top. Um, one being the developmentally appropriateness and the um, play-based nature of the program, how hands-on it is. The interdisciplinary piece was another big strength. Um, both in terms of how content's integrated, um, but how it builds across the year as well. And then also, um, and I think this came out a lot in what I was listening to the teachers talk about um, just a few minutes ago, but just how much it supports children's social and emotional learning and student agency um, in a very natural way. Sometimes we get asked, well, is there a social emotional curriculum that we should couple with this? And we uh, we'll say, just trust the program. It's kind of built in. <laughs> and if you just sort of follow that, you're going to see a lot of those pieces getting worked on just naturally and how the program's designed. Um, teachers talked a lot in the evaluation about um, increases in student disposition, things like student engagement, their happiness, their confidence as learners, the creativity and how much they saw them connecting their learning across different um, aspects of the curriculum. We also measured students' literacy skills and saw some really strong growth happen in phonemic awareness, phonics, vocabulary comprehension, and listening and speaking, which was really exciting because I know it, it can often be a little bit you know, worrisome when you're making a shift to a program, are we still gonna see um, positive gains for our children in some of those areas that we know that they've got to build the foundations in. Um, Boston, as I mentioned earlier, has done um, a longitudinal study, and I embedded another link to some of their work um, on this particular slide, so I'll make sure to send that out afterwards as well if, if you're interested in that. Um, if you want to take a look at the programs in more depth, um, right now, K for Me, well, pre K for Me and K for Me are posted on our website. We have a direct, a web page specific for them that you can click on and actually get into all the program materials, as well as what we call guiding documents that help educators use the program um, pieces for each unit. Um, and we also have the materials list, which I'll talk about in just a minute, posted on the site. Because first grade is still for us in the pilot phase, we haven't posted those materials yet. Our pilot teachers go to a, a secure folder to get those resources, but you can get to the first grade um, program right on Boston's site. So um, I'll make sure that I give you both the link to the Department of Ed site where you can find K for me and where you can find the resources currently for Boston. And as I mentioned, we'll be working to post first grade for me on our um, department site over the beginning part of the summer so that it's up in time for the training. 
In terms of materials, this is always an important piece. All of the um, teacher's manual, that type of um, material is free. It's an open source resource. And um, most teachers will either use it in an electronic fashion or may download it in the first year and put it into binders, whichever works best for you. Um, but there are definitely- and Can I add one thing right there? Oh, yeah. Yep. Uh, so for K for, for first grade for me, um, when you, if you look at K for me, the one that's open, you'll notice that the standards are not the Boston standards. They're the main learning results. If yeah. you look at the Boston first grade for me, the, the content of the lessons isn't different, but you probably don't want to go through and print it all yeah. because when it goes live, it will have, uh, the main learning results are, are in there and we have, you know, things are changed. So like one of the things that Boston does is their phonics program is foundations. And so we've removed the references to foundations and there are some things. So you probably don't want to go in on the first grade for me and the Boston pages and print that information because we do have some things that we change out specific to Maine. Um, so just yeah. before you go fill up binders and print. Yeah. Yes. You if, you're, if you're gonna delve into first grade for me, D exactly, wait to print that until we post it on the department's website and then it will be all, all aligned for you. The other thing that we'll be missing in Boston's is that in um, they've chosen to use FOSS science and we didn't want to ask schools to purchase another program. So we built our building out the science component and that will be in our version. So another reason not to print it until we get it up. Um, but you'll get a good feel for the program if you look on the Boston side. Um, so in, in terms of what you would need to purchase as a school to use the programs, um, in the first year, you definitely need the text. Um, there are probably some equipment that you might need, um, especially for some of the centers or studios. In kindergarten, having a sensory table can be really helpful. Um, you'll need blocks for your block center, some materials for your art studio. Um, and then there's a list of just basic supplies that are needed for some of the um, components like the science pieces and um, your art materials. Um, so when you get the links to where the supply lists are, you'll be able to see what, what's involved in that. Um, certainly the first year is generally a little more of an investment. And by the time you get to the second year, you're really just replacing consumables. Some schools though will will make some decisions about, you know, in the first year, we're gonna, we're gonna get all the texts because you really need those. We're gonna get some of the furniture pieces, but we may have to add on and we can help with some of the things that we'd suggest would be the first things to invest in and then how you might be able to adapt until you can afford um, some of the other pieces. Um, and then, as I mentioned previously, you do need to have a systematic explicit phonics program and then your math program. Um, to balance it out, which you hopefully already have those pieces. Um, as far as training is concerned, the department um, will provide um, a really strong um, training process in the summer leading up to when teachers are going to start using the program. And then we'll also provide opportunity for professional learning communities throughout the course of the school year. This coming summer, we're going to um, move from two days of training, which we've done the last couple of years, to three days of training. And that's because what we found is that two days is just really tough to fit everything in and it becomes very overwhelming. So we're gonna um, do one day in June, on June 28th, and we're gonna tackle just the literacy block time, those pieces during that session. And then, um, in July and August, the la it's the last day of July and the first four days of August, we're going to offer the training for the other program components. So June 28th will be kindergarten and first grade teachers together, but then in later in the summer, we'll have two days for K for me and two days for first grade for me. And that's when we'll walk through all the other components and show you how to um, 
that literacy block that we talked about in June will integrate really well into the rest of the program. These trainings in the summer, as well as the PLCs, often have lots of our teacher leaders involved who've been using the program. So it's a really nice way you get to hear from them as well, um, firsthand experiences in using the program. And then um, this will come in the slide deck, but this is the link to the Boston site. Um, so you'll be able to um, go and take a look at the first grade if you need to do that. So I'm gonna stop there with questions, four questions and kind of open it up because I know we're at 4.30 and I don't wanna keep you too much over time, but happy to answer any questions and I know our educators would be as well. Feel free to come off mute if you wanna jump in or put a question in the chat box. 